Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to yet another tutorial on my 2D player controller. My name is John, otherwise known as Megahertz, and today we're going to begin building the foundation for the melee combat system using Bolt Visual Scripting. By the end of today's tutorial, you should have a working combat system where your character can draw his weapon and sheath it, and he should also be able to attack and damage enemies. I do have to warn you though, this tutorial is not for the faint of heart. It's probably the most difficult tutorial in the entire process, so prepare yourself for a booger and not the kind you eat. For this build, you're going to need a couple of macros. You're going to need the ground attack macro, so go ahead and pause your screen and go ahead and build this in advance and continue when you're ready. And you're also going to need the gizmos macro, which you may recognize from the Bolt Quick Tips video that I made. Go check that video out if you want to know how this one works. You're also going to need to add a couple of variables for this build. Going to our player game objects and scrolling down to the bottom of the variables list, go ahead and add one called can attack. This is a boolean and go ahead and set it to true. And you're also going to need to go to the graph inspector and we're going to add our first scene variable for this build and call it sword damage, make it an integer and set it to a value of one. Next, we're gonna to have to set up a new input button called melee by going to our input manager, click edit project settings and on the left hand side, you should see input manager. Add one to whatever this number is for you, going down to the bottom, rename the last object on the list, melee. I have mine set to the R key. It is a key or mouse button down and it is also on the X axis. Now this, just special note, this is not to attack. This is to draw and sheave your weapon. I'm going to be using the left mouse click for attack, so if you want to use something different, you're going to have to set it up in the input manager. If this all seems pretty easy for you so far, this is where you're going to hate my guts. Um, going into the animator, click a new bool, and you're going to set that as combat, and then you're going to need three new triggers. This is the first time we use triggers in this build. You're going to need one called attack one, one called draw sword, and one called sheath sword. You're then going to need to set up eight new animations and you can get the sprite for this if you don't have it in the link in the description below. You need to go ahead and set up one called Draw Sword. Uh, you need one set up the Chi Sword, which is pretty much the same thing in reverse. You're going to need Sword Idle, which looks like this. You're also going to need Attack 1, which looks like this. You're going to need Sword Run, or uh, Combat Run, so it looks like this. You're going to need combat walk, which is pretty much the, the same thing as the regular walk, and I'll explain why you need both in just a few minutes. Same thing for combat jump and combat fall. Well, if you don't hate me yet, you are about to, because now we're going to have to set up the animations for each of those new eight animations that we have. You should see them on the base layer. Go ahead and create a new substate machine by right clicking, click substate machine, call it combat mode. You rename it right up here, name that combat mode and everything but draw sword and sheath sword, you're going to drop into combat mode. Inside combat mode, you're going to right click, create a new substate machine, call it jump and fall, do it again, name it walk and run, and one more, you're going to name ground attack. Um, you guessed it, combat jump and combat fall are going to be sitting in jump and fall. Same thing for walk, combat walk and combat run. Uh, you're going to set those two in there. Sword idle is gonna be right here. And ground attack, you are going to set attack one into that. Yes, I know there's only one, but we're going to build a combo system uh, later on, and this is going to set us up for that. So this, we're just building the right foundation. Once you get all those set and put in the right places, guess what? Now we have to set up transitions for all those animations. And just bear with me, there are three pages of this, and yes, I know that is a lot, and you might be wondering why we're going to do all of these animations um, and I will explain that in just a minute. Just trust me on this. It took me way longer to set up this slide than it does to set up the an actual animations in, in Unity. So um, just, just try to do them one at a time, knock them out. It actually goes pretty quickly when you realize that there's a pattern to these. From any state to draw a sword, you're gonna draw a sword. This is going to be a trigger that we set up. Um, Combat true, just go ahead and, and do these lists one at a time. Special note on draw sword to draw idle, there is an exit time of one on our draw sword um, and, and, um, and our sheath sword. The reason you wanna get the sword all the way up. So there's going to be an exit time on those. You're going to go in and turn the loops off 
on those. And so how you do that is on draw sword, double clicking on that, make sure the loot time on both draw sword and sheath sword are unchecked. So once you get this set up, just go ahead and pause it, make sure you have all these done correctly, double check them. Then we're gonna go to, to page two, sword idle to combat jump, so on and so forth. Combat jump to combat fall, uh, exit time of one, and there is no loot on combat jump. Just make sure you double check that, have that set up. Um, going down here, attack one to sword idle, that's another one that has an exit time of one. Um, the reason why, because this is a trigger. Combat jump is a bull, but we wanna make sure that it doesn't loot on itself. Um, okay, last page, combat fall to combat walk, so on and so forth. Uh, special note, oops, all three of these have an exit time of one. The reason why we need all these animations is because we have two separate states. We have a combat state and we have a non-combat state. We don't want to mix the two up. For example, we don't want our sword run to go back to a regular idol whenever we stop moving. So yes, I know it's a lot, but go ahead, power through it. You'll be all right. All right, after you get that done, you're probably going to need to go have a good cry in the corner. And when you get back from that, we'll go ahead and start on the bolt side of things. We're going to need to go to our player game object and right click and create a new empty object and give it the name attack point. You're then going to go give it a new flow machine component and then you're going to uh, select from the macro list that macro that we made earlier, gizmos, and it will look something like this. You should notice that you will see this red kind of circular object on that game object now. It will be right on top of your player. Uh, it should look something like this. Uh, what we're going to do, uh, you can change the color here if you want. Uh, you can change to whatever you want. Uh, I'm gonna leave mine as red. And then you can change the size of this right here. You can make it one or you can make it two or whatever. Uh, I'm gonna leave mine at 0.5. And uh, going into my uh, animation on my character, I'm going to uh, click attack one. And I'm gonna go about probably I think the, what is it, the second frame. And then I'm going to, uh, clicking on this attack point object, I'm just gonna kind of move it to the right here. And I'm gonna try to kind of line it up into that uh, crescent uh, just as best as I can or just where I'm happy with it. And that is where my attack is going to actually be triggering. Okay, we have one more thing that we're gonna have to do with this attack point game object. We're gonna have to give it the tag of weapon. So you should not have that in your drop down list. Just if you don't, click add tag. Click uh, the plus sign here and then add uh, another line there called weapon. And then going back to your attack point object, you're going to have to now select weapon from the list. You can go ahead and put that on the player layer as well. Next, we're going to go back to our player game object and clicking on non combat, then our master macro. We're going to go to our singleton principle where we started the event and set the player game object as a player application variable. We're actually gonna add one more thing there called stop movement. The reason why we need this is because we're gonna call this in our movement just to ensure that we have a little bit of delay whenever we draw our weapon and sheath our weapon. So going under the movement super unit, we're going to add, we're just gonna scoot back just a little bit from the sequence uh, between the input and the sequence and we're going to say, hey, can we move? Are we stop movement? If the stop movement is true, then it's not going to do anything. But if it's false, well then we can move. That's going to give us the ability to put a little bit of delay when we draw and sheath our weapon. You are now gonna have to make a decision on what you want your player to be able to do in combat mode. If you want him to have all of these abilities, for example, slide and wall sliding and wall jumping and dashing and crouching, then uh, what you can do is you can just right click this and copy it and then just paste it right over here and just rename it combat mode. Um, I did not want my player to have any abilities but run and jump and swing his sword. Um, I, I wanted him to be able to, to uh, do special things in non-combat, which means you're going to have to take your weapon out at strategic locations and time. So that's, that's why I did that. But inside of combat, um, I just right-clicked and copied the things inside of uh, Masters. I just selected the parts that I wanted, and I put them inside of combat. So again, all I wanted to be able to do is move and jump and sprint. He's still going to have to have falling because he's going to have a sword. He's going to walk off edges sometimes. He's going to have to stop moving whenever he hits a wall. 
and it's going to want to animate. So that you're going to have to set that inside of combat. And then uh, running from combat to your combat, you're going to have to go ahead and set up one of these. Now again, this is uh, it's having a wait timer. So anytime you have a wait timer, you're going to have to set that as a co-routine. Uh, but we're going to take advantage of our stop movement. And what this is going to do is whenever we're walking and we draw our sword, it's going to stop our player from moving. And, and the reason why I'm doing that is because there's not really a draw sword slash walk or run at the same time animation. So I just made it to where he stops, he draws his weapon, and then he has like a half a second delay. That's just enough time to get the sword out and put the sword away. So you're going to have this at combat end, moving from combat non-combat put a custom event there call it combat end uh, set the variable stop movement to true it's not going to let him walk have a half a second delay then set it back to false and then you're triggered the transition back to combat same thing from combat uh, or non-combat to combat the difference is uh, this is going to be just regular combat but other, than, other than that everything else is exactly identical. Going back into our master flow macro inside a player under non-combat, we're going to have to set up a trigger to ensure that combat mode is now active. The way you do that is just on your melee button down. Remember I had you set up a melee button. So on button input, rename that melee. You're going to set uh, a grounded check here just to ensure that I'm not going to let him draw or shoot his weapon unless he's standing still on the ground. Uh, so set a grounded super unit there if you don't have one of those. It's very simple. Just go ahead and set it up just like that. And um, then we're going to set the anim animator bool of combat to true, which is uh, referencing this one right here. It's checking that, so it's allowing us to make those necessary transitions. Set the animator trigger to draw sword. So he's gonna draw his weapon, then he's gonna go into combat mode. So that's from um, our non-combat to our combat mode. So that's what's gonna fire right here. Combat, it's going into combat mode. And then we're going to have to have a return object, so exit combat mode, and then we'll get into our ground attack in just a second. Basically, this is pretty much the exact same thing, except for we are unchecking combat and we are sheathing our sword this time and going to combat end. So let's go ahead and talk about our ground attack now. Uh, this also is a coroutine because there is a wait time in ground attack. I went ahead and had you set that macro up. Now, if you do not throw in this grounded unit here, which again, this is just a very simple little macro you can set up, and I've used this probably 15 times in my build, so you're gonna wanna go ahead and make that if you haven't already. Uh, it just does a grounded check, and the reason why is because if I'm walking around and I, or I'm jumping and I'm swinging, uh, not only we're we gonna have a uh, an air attack, but we don't want it to fire. So if I click and I'm in the air, I don't want it to whenever it hits the ground to then fire because it's just it, it, it's not firing at the right time. So make sure he's grounded whenever you hit it. Then he's gonna go into this ground attack, and then after the end of this, it will trigger attack once. Let's go ahead and look at this ground attack object, and we'll see if we can make some sense of this. So coming in from the input. It's checking our can attack variable. So if can attack is set to uh, true, if it's true, well then we're going to set our uh, attack variable now to false, and we are going to fire our attack. And this little circle right here, remember I had you set that at 0.5. If you set this to one, whatever this is set to, you're going to need your attack point right here set to the exact same thing. So make sure those two numbers are exactly the same. So um, underground attack, um, I have a little delay here. That's what that delay was for. The reason why is because we want to give our animation time to swing so it will actually look like when I swing my weapon um, that, that this little circle right here, which is what this overlap circle all is doing, it will fire and it will look like it's swinging at the same time. I just had to mess with those values and that's the one that I found that actually works. The layer mask is set up to enemy here, enemies. 
so um, I'm going to show you the simple enemy AI I have here in just a minute. Your enemy has to be set on enemy's layer. And then what this is doing is it's saying, I'm going to fire this on that game object. I'm going to fire this little circle and uh, everything caught inside that list of this uh, overlap circle all, everything that's inside of that is now going to get the damage uh, custom event fired on it. So it's gonna be that item is going into this list and for each object in that list, then this is going to happen. So if you had a bunch of enemies stacked up at once and you click that button, then it will go into trigger the damage. So on that weapon, uh, game object, which is why we had that attack point set to weapon, it will fire uh, everything inside that game object is what is going to trigger the damage on that game object. So, um, on the enemy game object. So we'll talk about that in just a second. Let me just explain this really quickly. This is just a very simple attack cooldown. You don't want to be able to click, 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 click as fast as you can. So I put a 0.3 second delay that seems to work out as far as the uh, animations are concerned it looks pretty close might be a little off you'll have to play with that and then after that it's going to set the can attack boolean to true so when you do damage in melee there is actually two sides of that there are the attack side and there are the receive side so i have a very simple skeleton enemy ai set up here i'm not really going to go into this i will show you each one of the screens so that you can see exactly how i have this set up it's just a normal state, and then you have a damage state where it subtracts the health. This was that sword damage variable that I had you set up earlier in the scene, so that we know that it's subtracting one from the enemy health whenever it is receiving damage. Uh, from the attack, so let's say for example he's in normal mode most of the time, he just as it comes onto this stage or in this inner state, it checks to see if his enemy, enemy health is greater than or equal Zero. I'm sorry, less than or equal to zero. If it is, then it will trigger the death state. It's very, very simple animation, and it's saying, hey, you can fire that from any state and go into the death, and these are all the things that I have it doing. It's not really that important because this is the player controller. I just wanted to show you that it actually works whenever we fire the damage here. So uh, whenever it enters the damage state, it's going to check its health, and it's going to subtract one from its health, and it's going to make it look like it's hurt, and then it either goes... Uh, to, I'm sorry, it goes to stunned. I have it set up on a different thing. You don't actually need that. Um, but then it just, it damage goes to damage and it goes back to the normal state right here. Um, so, uh, I just have this set up to just so, so that you know that there is an attack side of things and there is a receive side of things. It's going to be the same thing whenever we set up our enemy AI to attack our player. Again, I'm not really going into enemy because this is about the player not about the enemy. Okay, if you made it this far, you should not only have my undying respect, you should also have a working melee system. If you had any issues with this build, be sure to hit me up on Discord. In the next video, we'll build off this system to create a melee combo attack. I hope you don't have nightmares tonight about setting up animations in the animator. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. Peace.